everyone, Yuri here and in this video I will show you how you can use content from the Figma inside Supernova documentation and keep this content updated so when you change something in Figma it automatically propagates into the documentation. Now I have some Figma file that I have prepared ahead and I have very small content here, I just have one image here and then also some image that is basically a collage uh, a combination of different icons with some header and so on. And while I can render the icons as assets inside Supernova and so on, I would like to present them as this very specific order uh, of icons, including those headers, just as an image. Now I would have several options here. Of course, I can go ahead and just export this image and then import it into Supernova as an asset um, or just drag drop it into uh, the editor itself. But that's not really very useful because what will happen if we change this image, right? What, what will happen uh, with our documentation? Well, if we use the static image, the exported static image, then nothing will happen because you just upload it in from your file system. So it doesn't know that it's coming from Figma. So instead we have this functionality in Supernova that allows you to set, select a specific frame inside a specific file, add it into the documentation and then basically have it tracked and every time there is a change we can propagate this change into the documentation on your behalf. So you can actually maintain this library of documentation images, uh, different versions of components for example and so on and just keep everything automatically synchronized with Supernova. So the very first thing that I have to do, just go back to Supernova and write Figma. Now in terms of Figma, you have two options. Uh, specifically, you can embed a Figma file or a specific Figma frame, but this will create iframe uh, where you can have the visualization of the Figma, their standard embedding, uh, which is sometimes useful, but many times it's not because it has a lot of limitations. So instead we will use the second option, which is Figma frame. Now Figma frame allows you to select a file and also select frames from that file that should be rendered inside the documentation. So I'll add a Figma frames and now it asks me to add a frame. So I'll click on this and because we haven't provided any file just yet uh, to our documentation, I will have to provide a URL to that file that I want to use. So I will just go back to Figma, uh, copy the link to the file and then back go, go back to Supernova, copy paste that link and basically import everything that is in that file so we can use it to, to be rendered directly inside Supernova. Now this has been processed, so uh, we can see that uh, we have the content of the Figma file available here. And what is important to note here is that we only show you the frames because only the frames can be requested for rendering. So whatever is frame here, and you can see that I have some hero images here and the icons as frames, uh, and also maybe some sub layers, uh, those all can be rendered here. Now. I want to first render the hero image that I have selected here. So let's select this, let's confirm. And as you can see, we are now rendering the image and now we have the image inside Supernova. With the first image rendered, I actually also want the second one so I can show you the changes. So what I will do, I will simply scroll down, click add another frame and select the one uh, that, we, that uh, represents the second frame. So let's do that. Let's just add icons. And now it will render both the hero image and of course the icons as a preview in a, in a set setup that I have created inside Figma. So now we have the icons. Of course, um, there is a lot of configuration. So for example, I can make it much smaller, but it really doesn't make sense in this regard. I can also just separate it. So it's a one frame and then maybe I add another text and another frame. So if you are, for example, documenting components and so on, this is really useful. But where this functionality really shines is the updates that, and the automatic update that we can do with this. So um, what I would like to do is to go into those icons, into this frame that we have in Figma and maybe change the gray text to be something more shiny. So let's go back to the Figma and let's select the regular and maybe let's change it to something like this. And then also let's go to the tiny one, um, unlink this 
and also maybe change it to something like this. And now I would like to see this change propagated into my documentation. So what I will do first inside uh, Figma is create a new version of this file. Because if I create a new version of this file, Supernova will actually pick that there was a change and will propagate it on your behalf. So no need to really describe too much. Uh, let's just call it a new version. And now Figma basically publishes this, uh, this version of the file so we can consume it. Now, going back to the documentation, you will see that it still didn't change, right? And this is intentional because the sometimes you really don't want this data to be propagated uh, into the documentation unless you are happy with it. And so instead, you have to actually force this update manually. It will still propagate automatically all the information but you are in charge of when this specific event happens. So I'll go back into the design system management. I will go to Figma tab. And in here, you can see that you have two sources. Now, the design system files we have already covered inside previous videos is basically what provides the data for the design system, the design data for the design system. But we also have documentation files and we've actually added one of the documentation files already just by uh, being asked to provide a first file uh, when you are linking that frame. Now, what we can do is click Get Updates, which basically reads a new version of this file. And for all the frames that you have used, it renders their new representation inside the documentation. So this will just take a second. And once this updates, uh, we can go back to the documentation and we can switch to the Figma content. And now you will see that we have the hero image that we have used, but of course, our icons and the regular text and our icons and the tiny text has changed. You can use this throughout the entire documentation for various purposes. You can use this for documentation. You can, you can use this for do and don'ts. It's just really up to your imagination. But the really spectacular thing about this is that it always keeps your content updated. So you can really use Figma as your true design source of truth and the documentation will grow with those changes. Now, I hope that you liked this video and I will see you in the next one.